Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and this is episode 7 of building a high-end 450 size quadcopter. So let's carry on where we left off in the last video and that is calibrating the power module. And some other things as well, because before we do that, we're going to need to put propellers on there. Because the propellers are going to give us the load that we need to give the correct current reading from the battery. So, in order to do that, I have installed these prop adapters here. Now, the standard prop adapters all came clockwise, but that is a problem because our motors are moving clockwise and counterclockwise, which means that two of the motors are going to unscrew themselves. So, if you go back to episode 1 I bought these prop adapters which come in clockwise and counterclockwise forms. Something that is interesting about that though is the bags that these come in are labelled clockwise and counterclockwise but that is relating to the direction that the screw moves in and not the direction that they should be moving on the motor. So this motor, for example, turns clockwise, which means the propeller turns clockwise and you screw it on clockwise. So the inertia of the propeller turning clockwise is actually backwards and that is going to cause the screw to unscrew itself. So what we need to do is on the clockwise motor, we need to put the counterclockwise adapter and the same this side. So this is a counterclockwise motor. It needs the clockwise adapter. We've got the clockwise motor needs a counterclockwise adapter and the counterclockwise motor needs a clockwise adapter. Another good way to show this is to hold the nut with your hand and then move the motor in the direction that it should turn and the nut should screw itself on. So this is the back left arm which is a counterclockwise arm and if I move the motor it spins down and it locks itself. Another way to show it is if I take the nut and unscrew it to the top and then arm the quadcopter, the nut should then travel down the shaft of the motor and lock itself. So let's do that. So I'm going to arm it. And there we go. And if I throttle up, we should see the nut move down. Full throttle there. There you go. And if I punch the throttle, you can see that the screw has screwed itself on. So there you go, that is how to know which prop adapter to put on which motor, but basically the easy way to remember it is if you've got a clockwise motor, you need to put the counterclockwise adapter on it, and if you've got a counterclockwise motor, you need to put the clockwise adapter on it. Okay, so now that we've got the motor adapters fitted, we now need to do something unorthodox with the propellers. So what we need to do is we need to simulate the motors and the propellers all running at about 50% throttle. The problem with that is if we put the propellers on the correct way we're either going to have to hold the quadcopter down because it's going to try and take off and it's going to be very dangerous or we're going to reverse the propellers which is what we are doing here. Now we need to be scientific about this. The reason for that is we want an accurate reading on our power module and to get that we need the exact same setup that we would have if the quadcopter was flying. Now we don't get that by taking the propellers and just switching them over so the quad pushes it Itself into the ground. The reason for that is the propellers aren't as efficient as pushing that way as they are that way. So what we need to do is take the propellers in the correct order that they are on the aircraft. We need to take them off, twist them upside down and move it along one. So now this is the counterclockwise propeller turned upside down. So you are just shifting them all around once and flipping them upside down. The reason for that is in that position they are creating the same thrust as they would be on the correct way around but they're pushing down into the ground which is what we want. That's going to give us the same current draw as if they were the other way up. So it's a little bit messy but it's going to give us an accurate reading so that's what I've done here. You also need to balance the propellers. I'm not going to go through that but if you check on my channel I use the Dubro prop balancer. It is brilliant and I show how to to balance these props as well. So what we're going to do now is plug this watt meter into the quadcopter. I've already soldered my XT60 connectors on which we bought in the first episode. This is going to plug in this end from the battery and then this end into the quadcopter and it will power up the quadcopter. This is going to show as the amp draw when I lift the throttle up, which is going to allow me to calibrate the current in the Mission Planner software. 
This is going to show us the voltage as well at idle, so we can use this to calibrate the voltage as well. But I've also got my trusty voltage alarm as well, which you saw me buy in the first episode. We can use that as well to compare it against the voltage of both of these. Okay, so here we are back in Mission Planner. I have got the quadcopter connected to its battery through the watt meter, and I have already got the telemetry module connected here, as you can see. So if we loop down here somewhere, we will see battery voltage voltage and that's not right at all is it and we've got nothing showing here either so what we have to do is go to the initial setup tab and we need to go into this optional hardware tab and battery monitor here so you can see at the moment the battery monitor is disabled we need to change that so I'm going to change it to voltage and current that allows us this other option here which I'm going to change to 3dr power module and then finally this third tab we've got the pixhawk here Okay, so you have to leave it for a while to settle, but you can see now we have 15.1. But if we look on the watt meter, it's 15.46, and I have tested that against my other individual cell monitor, and it's about the same. So we are slightly out here. In fact, if we go to flight data now, we can also see it there. 15.12 and also down here battery voltage 15.12 as well so it's slightly out so if we go back to initial setup what we can do is we can actually change the reading that we are seeing so if we select that there and now do 15.46 and then enter it will recalculate this here voltage divider and now if we go back to the flight data screen it should show that voltage there you go 15.47 15.46 okay that's still not quite right so i'm going to try again 15.46 and then enter it's changed the voltage divider again you can see there now we're getting 15.43 and we go back to the flight data, 15.45, 47, that's pretty accurate, I think that's accurate enough. Okay, so now that that is showing the same figure, we need to do the same for the current. So if we go back to initial setup there, what we need to do is arm the quadcopter, so I'm going to press the button, the arming button, okay, so I'm now going to arm the quadcopter, now I'm going to do the same for the current. I'm going to lift the throttle up to 50% and whatever reading is on the watt meter, I'm going to enter it into that measured current and then click off it and it's going to recalculate the current. So let's do that. Okay, so now we are done with the power module calibration, we can move on to the Compass MOT, which also requires the propellers to be upside down and moved across one, so the quad pushes itself into the ground to simulate it flying. What this Compass MOT does is it gets all the electronics going, so the motors, the battery, the power to the Pixhawk, and it gets the motors going to 50%. And that is going to give an offset to the compass because all these things working together creates interference which can upset our magnetometer. So what it's going to do is it's going to get all that running, create an offset, and so we will have a perfect compass setup. Okay, so what we need to do is go to the compass slash motor calibration screen on here. But first, this gets everyone this. It gets me every time. You need to arm the copter first by pressing the arm button. Okay, we are armed. And then I'm going to press start here. Okay, so if we throttle up and throttle to 50% and then do finish 
calibration successful. Fantastic. Okay, I think we are actually ready to fly. Of course, we need to put the propellers on the correct way around. So I'll go and do that now. Now it can be quite difficult knowing which way to put your props on, so here's a quick tip. So this is the front of the quadcopter facing that way, so if you've got your two blades pointing out like that, you can see the blade has this kink here and it sort of kinks outwards like that. So you do the same on the other propeller, so that one kinks outwards that way like that. So if you flip the quadcopter around it should be exactly the same. So you can see there, this blade kinks out that way, this blade kinks out that way. So you've got this circle there, this circle there, flip it around, this circle out that way, and this circle out that way. So there you go, that is episode 7. Join me in the next video where we set up and fly the quadcopter. Thanks so much for watching, please continue to subscribe, cheers.